What's up everybody, hope you're doing well. iOS 14 has been out for a few days now, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my list of 30 awesome hidden features in iOS 14. Now, these are features that Apple did not mention at their WWDC keynote, but I did do a review of the main features of iOS 14 on my channel recently, so that will be linked in the description as well as in a card in the upper right of the video up there if you're interested. iOS 14 actually ended up being a huge update in terms of features, which isn't really what we were expecting this year, and there are a good amount of cool new features to cover, one of the bigger updates that I can remember in recent iOS history. And if you are looking to install iOS 14 beta onto your device, I do have a guide on my channel to do that. And the link will also be in a card in the video up there in the upper right, as well as in the description below the video down there. So check that out if you would like to install the iOS 14 beta. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Thanks for watching. And be sure to smash that like button right below the video if you do enjoy it and subscribe if you enjoy these videos. So in terms of the hidden features, let's get into it. Now, most of these features are iOS UI enhancements. And honestly, in terms of performance, iOS 14 really seems much smoother than older iOS versions as I've been running it on my iPhone 7 here, which is an older device, and I haven't really run into any re-springs or any major bugs. I could be a little lucky, but honestly, I've heard that the battery issues have been giving people some problems. I haven't really had bad battery either on this. I will keep you updated as this is just the first beta, and at some point I'll run into some issues as well, but for now it seems to be working great, which leads me into hidden feature number one. Now, the best hidden feature that I wanted to mention up front, even though it does not work on the iPhone, 7 is double tapping or triple tapping the back of your device for certain functions and accessibility. So I'll put a screenshot of this in the video. Basically, Apple implemented functionality that you can double tap or triple tap to have functions happen on your device. So it's not revolutionary, but it's something that really is cool because I know back in the day there was rumors that people wanted a home button on the back of the iPhone. And this allows you to do stuff like go home, launch the control center, open a Google Assistant or Siri or anything like that by double tapping or triple tapping the back of the device, which is very very, very cool and Apple didn't even mention that which is kind of cool like Easter egg that they gave us here. There is a hidden feature in the camera app that when the camera is in use you will see a green dot in the upper right as you can see right there that shows you that the camera is in use and when I go back to the home screen it disappears. Now you can have audio in the background if you go into picture in picture mode from Safari and then go back home to the home screen you can swipe this off to the left and you will still hear the audio from the actual video that is playing and you can swipe it up here and then go ahead and X out when you're done with the video itself and it is cool to have the audio in the background functionality. Now this one is a little subtle, but when you launch apps, there is a new animation. It kind of swerves slightly at the end, so you'll need to look closely to see it happening, but there is a new slight difference in the animation there. Now when I go into Notes, Notes is more rounded here with the design around the corners, so a simple redesign there. Now you can also hide home screen pages. Now this goes hand in hand with App Library, but if you hold down on the screen anywhere and get into Jiggle Mode, and you tap the three buttons down here, or the three dots rather, you can go ahead and uncheck any of these pages and it will hide it. And it's very, very simple. All of the apps will show up in the App Library if you would like that, and it's really, really cool hidden features. You can also hold your finger on the three dots and just quickly switch between the pages there just like like that so very very instant access there something we didn't have in the past another new feature is in the upper left if you're in a menu button and you go ahead and long press there and hold your finger you can actually jump straight back into the older menus or earlier hierarchy menu items we used to have to scroll one by one through the menus now you can jump directly to where you want similar to Mac OS on iOS in the clock application there are new tabs they moved the bedtime interface up to the top of the app and also if you go to enter an alarm if I go to enter this alarm here it is no longer a scrolling interface it is simply a text edit interface which is something brand new that hasn't been changed for years actually now if you are on a page that is not in your native language Safari can translate directly in the app so all you have to do is be on a page that's in a different language and you can see it says translate to English for my native language and it works instantly really really cool feature there in Safari speaking of translate the translate application will now support offline translations as well even though it was a brand new app this year they are allowing you to use it offline I mentioned this earlier in the video but you can hold any anywhere on the screen to enter jiggle mode, which is a new feature there. And they've also changed the X buttons to minus buttons when you go to delete an application there. So a simple change there. Now, when you are 3D touching on an application, there is a new menu that comes up that is just slightly redesigned there that says edit home screen with new icons. Not a revolutionary feature there, but it is a new little hidden feature. Now, when you are searching in Spotlight, it will actually have a blurred background there to the top hit that it wants you to click on for the most relevant result, which is a cool little change that lets you know which app is the most 
prominent and which suggestion it wants you to take. Now there is a new screenshot interface and animation. So when you take a screenshot, you can see it's been cleaned up a lot here on the bottom. And when you go ahead and go to save a screenshot, I'll delete this one. You can see that the animation is totally new and kind of pulls it right off the screen. So really, really cool there. Now, if you are a big texter, you can actually search for emojis now rather than scrolling through every single one. It's very, very simple. You just type in the emoji you're looking for and it should work right there on the native keyboard. Now in Control Center, there is an NFC tag reader for app clips there that you can go ahead and 3D touch on and you hold it near the app clip tag in a restaurant or out in the world and it will tell you what the app clip is and how to use it. So really cool there in Control Center. Also, they redesigned the Apple TV remote in Control Center to be full screen and it looks like a fully featured remote rather than being just a simple interface in the Control Center. It now almost looks like a full app that is built right into the Control Center. You'll also see at the top here, Apple actually tells you what the last apps were to use the camera or the microphone. So the QR code reader there was the last one for me to use it. And it will give you that little pop up until you exit out of the application. So it's really, really cool there to see what's accessing functions of your device. Now they did add a sleep mode button here in the control center, but it's not really working on my iPhone, but that will be updated in future betas. But this will go hand in hand with the Apple Watch in sleep tracking. Now, if you go to the app store, the info has been much improved. You can see a quick glimpses of the information here. You can see the size of the app, the language, the chart number that it is at, and the star ratings of the app. So much improved there, quick information right at a glance. Picture in picture mode can also be turned off automatically in the settings. So if you don't want to use picture in picture mode ever, that is a new feature that you can turn off right there and go back to the way that iOS used to be. And FaceTime in the FaceTime app will also support picture in picture natively. So that's good to know there as well. Now, if you're in the music app, it actually changes color based on the song that you're listening to. So you can see there with that album cover, it changes. And then if I go into Tom Petty here, it will change right there as well with the color of the music app itself. So very, very cool when you're playing music there, more like a jailbreak app. Now in the messages app, when you have a pinned message, it will actually show you the typing indicator right on the main conversation interface rather than inside of a message itself. So when you're going through the list view of messages, it'll actually show you typing indicators right there, which is similar to Mac apps and almost like Slack messaging, which is really cool there to have that updated. They also added a Memoji icon directly into messages for those of you that like to use Memoji. Now, if you go into the photos application, they actually added filtering into the photos so you can actually hit filter and you'll have some options there to show you which ones you want to see in the photos app in terms of photos and videos. And you can also sort through the photos a little bit better. It just has more customization within here. If you have a lot of photos, this could be super helpful for you. Also within the camera app, when you are filming video, you will be able to automatically switch between different frame rates directly in the camera app while shooting video, which is a biggie for YouTubers. So that is my quick overview of 30 awesome hidden features in iOS 14 that work on iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. So hopefully you enjoyed. Be sure to smash that like button if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel with bell notifications on for more iOS coverage coming in the next few videos. Also be sure to check out my recommended tech products for products I personally use and enjoy on my Amazon store link in the description below the video. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. I'll also have my social media profiles and my website linked below for you to follow and interact with me further. So drop a follow there. Thanks for watching new videos every Thursday. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.